The following is a presentation of the Women's Football Alliance. Opening weekend is in the books. We'll look back on week one and forward to week two on the road to Canton. Welcome to the Road to Canton. I'm your host, Brian Sweeney, the voice of the Women's Football Alliance Pro Division National Championship game. We had a great opening weekend of football across the entire Pro Division, including a long overdue win for one team and a surprising upset for another. Let's look back at the week one scores and highlights. Last year's Division II National Champion, New York Wolves wasted no time getting their first victory at the WFA Pro level when they gave the Farmingdale New York fans a tight game and a 20 to 14 victory over the Detroit Venom of Division II. In another WFA Pro versus Division II matchup, the Houston Energy welcomed the OKC Lady Force. However, it was the visiting team from OKC that upset the Pro Division team, this time as the Energy lost 14 to 16. Hoping to avenge the loss in the Pro Division National Championship last season, the St. Louis Slam played host to the Columbus Chaos of Division II. Last season, the Chaos failed to score on the Slam. This time around, they did manage to put three on the board, but it was not enough to overcome the Slam's high-powered offense, who beat the Chaos 65-3. And in a Pro Division head-to-head -head matchup, The Tampa Bay Inferno welcomed the Boston Renegades. At the half, Boston was only up by 13. However, the second half played out like Groundhog's Day as the Renegades did what they do best, put the ball in the end zone and beat the Inferno by a final score of 47 to nothing. Alex wasn't able to join us in studio this week, but he's at home with his thoughts. Thanks, Brian. While obligations here at school are keeping me away from the studio this week for this week's edition of Road to Canton, there was a lot of great things that I saw in the WFA Pro Division in terms of results from last week. None of the wins surprised me. What did surprise me was the multitude by which those wins occurred, specifically with Boston and St. Louis, both winning by multiple, multiple scores. It was impressive to see just how quickly their offense has gotten to gear. You know, sometimes in that first week of a season, it takes time for an offense to get going. It takes time for an offense to be able to reach its full potential. But both St. Louis and Boston really proved that their offenses were set, running, and ready to go. We'll talk about it more coming up in our Game of the Week segment, but I was impressed by what I saw out of Pittsburgh back at full strength. I was impressed by what I saw at a mile high, and I think that when we talked last week about the question of would New York be ready to go to Division I and the WFA Pro, there was a lot of good things that I saw in their matchup against Detroit, where when they were able to come back from being down early against the Detroit Venom, they did a great job in consistently responding, and Danielle Ayala had some perfect passes that led to not only touchdown scoring opportunities, but touchdown themselves. I was really impressed with what I saw out of New York this week, but in terms of the results, everything unfolded in week number one as planned in the WFA Pro Division. Now let's look at the week one games of the week. In the early game, the Alabama Fire welcomed the Pittsburgh Passion to Winona High School. Pittsburgh, still hurting from the 7-8 playoff loss in 2023, came to play and in doing so made sure the National Conference knows the passion are back and ready to play in 2024 by winning 36-7. Alex, what was it about this win for the passion that you like? A week ago we talked about the depth of the Pittsburgh passion and the Alabama fire and Pittsburgh very quickly responded to all of those questions in their win in Alabama on Saturday. You looked at again, was Marcelina Chavez ready to take the big time as the starting quarterback for the Pittsburgh passions? She answered that with a resounding yes. There were multiple times in their first drives against Alabama where penalties pushed them back. The one thing that I want to see out of Pittsburgh moving forward is I want to see that they make sure to play clean football for the rest of the season. That's a big thing that I worry about with Pittsburgh. A lot of times the penalties in their game against Alabama were unnecessary, unclean, and put them in difficult situations. Granted, the offense 
really put them in a great spot to convert those plays, but you don't want to be giving yourself long distance opportunities, specifically against other teams in the WFA. You know that matchup with Boston's coming up. You know that you're playing some other big time competition that you have to play cleaner football against. But that being said, Pittsburgh found all their answers on offense and their depth wasn't tested truly in game number one. They showed it, but it wasn't tested. Alabama on the other side, I think there's a lot of things that they have to look forward to where you're talking about it's a team that on Saturday against Pittsburgh, they threw the ball a lot more frequently than what they did last season. I liked the frequency with which they were throwing the ball, but the problem was the routes were just overthrown. And that's a better problem to have because you can teach touch. You cannot teach necessarily throwing the ball. It's time in the gym. So if you teach that touch pass, I think Alabama is going to be okay. They have a tough matchup coming up this week against Boston, but I really like what I saw, but it's just the gauntlet of their schedule to start the season that makes things tough for the Alabama Fire. Their running game got going. It was a tough first quarter, but they really were able to improve as time went by. And I like what Alabama did. I probably is not going to turn into a, a result this week, but the week after that, anything's possible. And in the second game of the week, the 2022 Division II champions traveled to play the 2021 Division II champions as the Nevada Storm welcomed the Mile High Blaze. This matchup will continue to be a great one in seasons to come, as in 2023, they split with both teams winning at home. This time, it was the visiting Blaze that won 49 to 21. These teams will meet again this season on June 1st in Colorado. Alex, the National Conference has the DC Boston matchup year in and year out. Now on the American Conference side, we have the Mile High Blaze and the Nevada Storm. Your thoughts on this growing rivalry. The Mile High and Nevada Storm rivalry isn't really one that's been ongoing for a short window. It's been going on for a long time and their rivalry at Division II, but you like to see the teams switch wins. That's what makes a rivalry great. Not one team winning every matchup, but they're being consistent. One team has a chance, the other team has a chance. That makes those things really opportunistic. You think about great rivalries in sport. One team wins, the other team wins. If one team wins more frequently than the other, then that's not much of a rivalry and that's not much fun for us to be able to look through and see. We talked about the question marks and I think that there's some opportunities to go through and and break this game down piece by piece, but the question marks that we had about the team's depth, the question marks that we had about the team's abilities to be able to move the football and stop the other team from scoring, I think head-to-head, -head, this isn't a good matchup for either team's defense. We kind of saw that a little bit on Saturday, but I really liked what I saw out of Camberley Santa Stephen, and I like what I saw out of Jesse Felker. The depth, again, at quarterback for both of these teams is phenomenal. There's some really good things that are going on on the offensive side of the football. I'm encouraged to see what both of these teams do moving forward because each has the opportunity as we talked about in week one each of these teams has the ability to expand what they can do and has a chance at the american conference crown yes minnesota st louis are probably the prohibitive favorites here at st louis of course we talked about their dominant game week one against columbus minnesota will play this week in their opening contest but there's so much to look forward to in terms of what those teams can do that it's really exciting to see both of their offensive flowing but again it's just how does Nevada, how does Mile High compare against other teams? That's going to be the defining characteristic in their season. Aside from that head-to-head, -head, I loved what I saw in week one and game number one between these two. I can't wait to see the reverse picture coming up later on this season. Lois Cook is back for 2024 with information and entertainment, or as we like to call it, infotainment, in her segment, Low on the Go. Oh, that was a question. Okay, on you, on you, already. Okay, okay. Hey, yeah. Um, you know, this is so exciting. We are out here at our our new practice field, and you know, there's going to be such a huge turnout. This is amazing. This is going to be the first time ever that we're going to have to cut so many people. And I, I don't like to do that. I don't like to do that to people. But we only want the best of the best. And you know, our veteran players are coming back, and they are, they are ready. They are ready to go. They're fired up for this new season, and. Yeah, we're looking forward to those new players coming in, but um, yeah, I gotta tell you, it's not, it's not, it's not an easy job. 
Not an easy job to be the head coach. <laughs> Where is everybody? Hello? 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 Did you send the message? Yeah. You sent it to everybody? Yep. Jan Jan? Lucy? Them two. Too tall, Tony? Yep. Roro? Yep. Wide back loose? Mm hmm. Diesel Debbie? Yep. What about Crazy Leg Carrie? Yep. Bam Bam, thank you, ma'am. Shem Shake and Bake. Baby Beluga Betty? Yeah. <gasps> well, I sent out the message. I don't think she sent the message. I don't think she even has a phone. <laughs> well, let's just give it a minute. Four years. I know we were out there for a long time, but I did not expect her hair to turn green. So what are we gonna do, coach? We gotta get players. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? <sighs> yes. Join us next week for another episode of Blow on the Go. <laughs> what you meant to sit right here and sit right on my hand. <laughs> Oh my hip. Oh my hip. Mm-hmm. What you call that? What you call that right there? What you call that right there? What's that? Oh, that's a camera. A camera. Com camera. Hmm. You know, back in my day, we didn't have nothing like that. Mm -mm. Back in my day, we didn't have electricity. Mm -mm. That's nice. Hmm. After this short break, we will look at the week two matchups. Let's jump right in to the week two matchups. Fresh off a week one win, the 1-0 New York Wolves welcome the 1-0 Baltimore Nighthawks of Division II. Last season on their way to the Division II Championship, the Wolves and Nighthawks met three times, including in the playoffs, where the Wolves won by their smallest margin of the season, 27 to 26. Looking to get back on the winning track, the 0-1 Houston Energy will host the Austin Outlaws of Division II. Last season, these teams met twice, with the Energy winning both games by a combined score of 106 to nothing. The Cali War will kick off their 2024 campaign when they welcome the 0-1 Central Valley Chaos of Division III. These teams met in 2023, with the War coming out on top 53 to nothing. The Dallas Elite Mustangs will also start their 2024 season when they welcome the 0-1 Zydeco Spice of Division III. Last season, these teams met once with Dallas coming out on top 52 to nothing. And in pro versus pro. The 1-0 Pittsburgh Passion hosts the DC Divas. Last season, these teams met twice with both teams winning convincingly on the road. This will be the only meeting this year during the regular season. Tampa, Nevada, and Mile High are on buys. In the first of two games of the week, the 1-0 Boston Renegades welcomed the 0-1 Alabama Fire. Last season, Boston beat the Fire in the conference championship game. Kickoff is set for 6 p.m. Eastern time. Alex, this is a rematch of the national conference championship game from last season. Does Alabama have what it takes to prevent Boston from winning their 40th straight game? 
I think that if you take a look at this matchup, Alabama and Boston was going to be a better matchup with last year's rosters than it was with what we have seen so far. We saw Boston with a dominant performance against Tampa Bay in Tampa, which was something that I expected. But as I said in an earlier segment, I wasn't expecting it to the depth of scoring which Boston put against Tampa Bay. Historically, Tampa Bay's defense has done better at home than it's done on the road. And so I was surprised just how efficient that Boston offense was going to be and how efficient they were. I I think that when you look at the Boston Renegades, the question has always been, since they've been on this run, is when is the bottom going to fall out? When are the points going to stop coming? And when is somebody else going to step into that role? The answer for that right now is nobody. Because Boston, once again, firing on all cylinders, and I expect that to be the same case this week against the Alabama Fire. I think that if you look at Alabama's roster last year, and I talked about it last week, where Alabama lost a significant portion of talent on the offensive side of the football, we saw how they struggled in week one against Pittsburgh. I don't expect them to do any better against Boston. But, you know, that being said, you're Alabama. You're playing with house money. Everybody expects you to lose. Heck, I just said you're going to lose. And so you have that ability to play loose with the football. You can take those big plays, that opportunity where Alabama's passing game has been at least structurally better than it was a year ago. So now how do you take advantage of those opportunities to stretch the football field, make the play go longer, and find a way to be able to all of a sudden maybe throw some surprises at Boston? For me, Alabama, a victory in this week. A victory is putting points on the board. You talk about that National Conference Championship game a year ago, you put zero points on the board against the Boston Renegades you got to be able to put some points. It doesn't matter how, but that for the Alabama Fire, that's your strength of victory this week. Boston will win. The question just becomes, by what margin? And we'll find out in Saturday's Week 1. We'll be right back to look at the second game of the week for Week 2. Welcome back. And in the second game of the week, the Minnesota Vixen look to start the road back to Canton by welcoming the team that kept them from getting their last season, the 1-0 St. Louis Slam. These teams met three times last year, including the American Conference Championship game. They will meet again on June 15th and most likely in the playoffs. This game starts at 6 p.m. Central Time. Alex, if history repeats itself, one of these two teams will be in Canton, Ohio on July 27th to play in the national championship game. Your thoughts on this important early season matchup. As we know, Minnesota and St. Louis is a head-to-head -head matchup that over the years on Road to Can has got me quite fired up as to what these two teams are going to be able to do successfully one way or the other. I'd like to take a look first at this head-to-head -head rivalry. I've talked about in the past that Minnesota and St. Louis is a head-to-head -head matchup that has favored St. Louis more times than it has Minnesota. Minnesota has never won in the city of St. Louis or its surrounding suburbs, and St. Louis has always won in Minnesota except for just one time that first game that really Minnesota had to play St. Louis and St. Louis missed out on the 2021 season, came back for 2022 and appeared very rusty. We know now after a week one win against Columbus, this is not a rusty St. Louis slam team. They figure to be the offensive powerhouse that they were a season ago. Jamie Gall is back. Jada Humphrey continues to be that feature back after a great year a season ago. And you have Taylor Hay. That's a great change of pace back as she continues to get older. But she still has the potential. We saw it last season and we saw it the season before. This is an offensive juggernaut that has to be slowed by near perfect defense. Minnesota on the other side, it's their first opportunity to see the football field this season where they were on by last week, but they have a lot of question marks that need to be answered. Significant changes on the offensive and defensive lines. Red Bryant retiring one of the greatest all times women's tackle football players. Well, she's retired. You need to fill that hole very, very quickly. You also have injury concerns in the secondary an already weak secondary for Minnesota where Megan Dixon, an All-American a season ago, is out for the season with an injury. So how do you fit the defense? Offensive side because the offensive side needs to do a better job this season of keeping Aaron Kelly upright and keeping her protected in the pocket. Aaron Kelly did not have a great season last year in terms of results on the field. She got the yards, she got the touchdowns, but the interceptions were just too high. You have to be able to give her time and the confidence to throw the football as she did in her All-American campaign in 2022, which led Minnesota to the national championship game against Boston. I like the St. Louis Slam in this head-to-head -head matchup until I see Minnesota on paper. And once you take what's on paper and put it on the field, I need to see that on the paper 
So that way you can see what does this Minnesota Vixen iteration have. They have a new head coach in Connor Joe Lewis, who, yes, has played for the team. And it's one thing that's going to be able to be great about her. She has that experience. She has the assistant coaching experience with Minnesota over the last couple of years. But all of a sudden, all those decisions fall on your shoulders. It's a tough decision to make each and every single week in terms of what plays do you run? What defenses do you throw at an opposition? But there may be none better than Connor Joe Lewis in terms of figuring out what the St. Louis have, and as a player, how do I defend it? She has firsthand experience of that. And we'll find out if Minnesota should be able to defeat the St. Louis Slam for just the first time since 2022, or if the Slam's drive for five will continue with a win this week. Don't forget to keep your stories coming to Road to Canton Show at gmail.com. And remember, the WFA games are always free to watch and they will never ask for credit card information. You can catch your games on multiple platforms, including the Women's Sports Network, For the Fans, YouTube, and more. For Lois Cook and Alex Westhead, I'm Brian Sweeney, and we'll see you next time on The Road to Canton. Thank you for watching the preceding presentation from the Women's Football Alliance.